Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. What's the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful? I seek refuge in Allah from the curse of Satan the devil. I hope you bear witness there is no god but Allah and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah of 14700 years ago is the last messenger of Allah. I ask Allah to bless Muhammad, bless the family of Ibrahim, bless Imam Wolf D. Muhammad and those in association with him. I ask Allah to bless us today and guide us in understanding not of just Al-Islam but of our prophet and the way he has lived his life to help humanity. I greet you with the universal greeting of peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> dear brothers, dear believers, I'm going to open up with English and the Quran. But I wanted you to know that I'm going to read from Surah 3321. It is important that I give you these surahs and these references. Our main topic today is business in Alice Land. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You have indeed the apostle of Allah, a beautiful pattern of conduct. For anyone whose hope is in Allah in the final day and who engages much in the praises of Allah. Now here in the Quran, Allah is saying that Muhammad is the best model, best example, the example for business, the example, the model for what? Truthfulness. The model for what? Ethics of code. says also that Muhammad conducted business fairly because inshallah we're going to discuss this but to do business or to do transactions trades as a Muslim as someone that believes in law it has to be fair and and for those of you who don't know, I don't know if Prophet Muhammad was the first one to introduce it, but he encouraged most believers, most Muslims come in contact with business, not only with each other, to sign a contract and have a witness to that contract. So let me give you the Islamic or Arabic word in the Quran. The word to jara, to traffic, to trade, to be in business. To jarat, trade, mercantile, affair, business bargain. This word has been used in the Quran about nine times. There's another word for business, or handling in certain business, karaba, or koraba. That's how you want to pronounce it. But it just means business. Those of us that understand business is a transaction. The transaction is what? Trade. Everything that we live or build our life upon. Trade. Bartering. Give and take. To what? Just because we need it to get clothing, food, and sometimes it's for the shelter. We have to pay for shelter. So it's a bargain. When you go into a rental agreement or apartment or you go into a mortgage, that's a bond. That's a transaction. You have to make the transaction peaceable to what? Not just being honesty and upholding the, the transaction on your end or the other party, that which you can't afford. Don't go into a transaction that would put you in debt because that goes into what? Reba. 
And some of y'all, or most people, know what the word Reba means. But if you don't, it says, this is in the Quran also, but the word Reba is a concept in Islam that refers boldly to the concept of growth, increasing, or exceeding, which in turn forbid interest, credits, from loans or deposits. The term Reba has also been roughly translated as pursuit of illegal exploitative gains made in business or trade. Another word people always say is usury. But everything that came out of Reba wasn't bad. That's why I said they talked about it. Let me give you another story. And this is also pertaining to business, riba. It's pertaining to growth. It's pertaining to honesty. It's pertaining to ethics. It's pertaining to truthfulness. In Quran, Surah 3529, Surely those who recite the book of Allah and keep up prayer and spend out of what we have given them secretly an opening hopes to gain which perish not. Allah reveals in the Quran in certain parts, especially when you do deeper study, that your gain or the money that you make from trade or business dealings could be a good thing, but it also could be a bad thing. It depends on if you was trying to swindle. That's a nice old word. Cheat, deceive the other party then you may receive the reward to that dealings, but Allah takes the blessings away. It goes, Allah also talks about these blessings that if you can help someone in these dealings and you can forgive them a debt that they owe to a certain extent, or you extend it until they're able to pay the debt, that he will give you more blessings or barakats later on down the line. And that's most important to us to be in the favor of Allah be in favor of Allah on his last day. And Allah talks about in different areas in the Quran and the later surahs, how he wants you to have yours in this life and that in the hereafter. So don't think making money or beautifying or increasing your wealth is a bad thing. It's not. It's important. But in respect to all this, we talk about fairness, justice, respect, and honesty. And it's not restricted to business deals, of course. It's restricted to your livelihood. And through these things we do as, as under Islamic code or a conduct, other people see you for who you are. Other people see you, oh, I can always go to Abdullah. I can always go to Jamel. And Jamel is going to treat me this way when I come to buy a product. Jamel is going to explain to me that this is the outcome. If I go this way, this is the outcome. I go that way, and this is how much profit he's going to get from me, no matter what I do. I like Jamel. Even though the other guys seem cheaper, Jamel offered me a better deal because he's very clear about where he's going with this transaction. So, again, trustworthy. It's a lot of hot deep. I mean a lot relating to trade relating to the Prophet Muhammad, relating to how we conduct business. I didn't read this here, Surah, but this is one more that I know is most important. This is um, Surah 33, Ayah 21. Certainly, you have in the message of Allah an excellent example for him who hopes in Allah in the later day. And remember Allah much. Again, let me say this again. The excellent example for him who hopes in Allah. The word hope could have been translated in a lot of ways. But it's not hope here. It's those who fear Allah. Those who seek the pleasure of Allah. But they tell you Muhammad is the excellent example. Muhammad was known as the trustworthy. Muhammad was known as a good businessman. Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, 1400 years ago, didn't just do 
business in Arabia Peninsula. He traveled out to Africa. He traveled out in a small part of the Sudan or Saudi or, or, or Asia, where they say Iraq and Iran. And he was gone for months, well, I mean months, maybe a whole, a whole year, to do this trade and the scam. So he came in contact with different people. And who was the first person that he worked for? His wife, Khadija. He was honest enough before he even got married to his wife. So the business was always a foremost thing for her, that she was able to have a livelihood, and she trusted this man, or a young man at the time, to carry on and take her business and help it become more profitable. And so we have to look at all these things, and you have to look at how the people related to him not just in business, but in the way he walked and, and, and lived. He gave things away to help someone else that was in need. All right? So he made sacrifices way before he was ever the prophet. Concern for who? Mankind, humanity. That was embedded in him from watching the conditions of the other people and how other people took advantage of he said, no, nah, this is not correct. It was in his heart. So, when you listen to another Quranic guy, 1735, and give full measure when you measure out and weight the, with a true balance, this is far better in the end. In the Quran, Surah 26, 181 through 183. I'm giving you all this here, references, so that you can check back. But today, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. When you come to business dealing and you reflect on what Allah is telling you, you'll see. It says, give full measure and be not of those who diminish and wait a true balance and wrong not men their do and not corruptly in the earth, making mischief. Mind you, Allah was talking about the people that was in charge of the property of a lot of orphans. Some of these people, like you said, their parents was killed in a war, but they had property coming to them, and they was not totally of age to take control. That property might have been valued more so because of the war and who won the war. And people wanted to, you know, build on it, better yet move in and stay there and pay for nothing. But he in charge other people other Muslims, other people that are supposed to have been smart enough to help them. But these people also didn't want to give the property back at one time. They wanted to take that which didn't belong to them lawfully and use it as a gain for themselves. So Allah pointed out these eyes and told them, this is what is going to happen to you. You're not only going to lose the profit just from the reward you but I'm going to definitely make sure that you see the hellfire. All right? Allah didn't tell them directly. He told it to the prophets. They read this to the people so they be reminded of their duties. That you're supposed to be ethical. You're supposed to be in trust because the trust was given to you. In Bakari, 3419. And if two parties seek the truth and make it manifest, their transaction shall be blessed. And if they conceal... And tell a lie. The blessings they transaction should be obliterated. Honesty and bona fide in matters of sales are stressed in many hadiths. It's in Muslim. Different hadiths pertaining again. Not just to truthfulness, but dealings. Abu Bakari has plenty on it. And I think um, Imam Ahmad, he has plenty on this. I was sitting here doing this research, and I said, wow. I have to tell you the real truth of where, where we're going with this. Business. For those who have business, it's hard. They have to put together a business plan if they're seeking grants. But besides them seeking a grant, they have to put away a business plan to see if the profit is in it for them. Those of you African-American Muslim, those of you African-American 
period, knows that in these communities that you are predominantly, you don't own nothing. You don't have no business no more. You used to have a butcher shop. Sometimes you used to have a flower shop. Sometimes you used to have a candy store. You have none of those things. But some of you go to the other stores, and you're, what y'all do? You go out there and you beg for credit. Oh, I'll pay you back Wednesday. I'll pay you next week. Or the people that be living on the streets, living on the streets, they're afraid of them. I come every day. I buy a newspaper. I might buy a cup of juice or a soda or whatever. But I come every day, and I can't get a credit. But the one that looks like they're going to harm you, you're going to say, here, take a credit. Here. Take a pack of cigarettes. You can pay me back next week. So my credit builds up. And I pay you back that, or I pay you back a little less than that. So the next time I come, I got to pay you back more. So you say, oh, no, no, no. You get, I got to run a tab for you. I never seen the tab. I know the price of this pack of cigarettes. I know the price of this soda. I know the pack of this chip. But that tab is, is more than the price. So what is that? That's reba. Interest on top of that which I regularly owe. And you smile at me when you do that. Because you want to call me a sucker. But you know what else? I was foolish. Because I didn't take what I needed. I didn't get what was basically aware of how much I had. Or what I could spend. All right? I'm not talking about because we're in a situation that we need other things to help us get there. So if a person gets the food stamps or whatever name they want to call the stuff today. I'm not talking about the person that goes out and get on the line and get the extra help from the food kitchen or the food pantry or the mail today. Sometimes we do need that extra assistance, but it's only because these stores or the stores that should be in the neighborhood are not there. A lot of us, we, they're not, not available, meaning we don't have the proper nutrition in the stores. It's missing. The store is really lacking, and the stuff that's in the store is not good, meaning that it's poor quality. The prophet, I read, may Allah bless him, told two big brothers coming together, do not buy something and put it wherever you're going to put it, because they used to have bazaars, so you have to put it outside on the street for people if it's not correct, meaning why would I buy a bale of apples or olives or Whatever they needed. It was oranges, whatever. Whatever the fruit could have been fixed before you said this thing was ready. So somebody said, okay, I want some cashiers. We got a cashier tree. It's gonna be, this crop is going to be so-and-so. I'll pay you this much for this tree. Flat. You don't even know if the tree is going to produce that year. But you ready to pay for something you don't have? So that's a violation. But the person that agreed to do this, they didn't even tell you, hold on. This is what we'll do. They ready to take your hard earned, whatever that may be. We use the word cash to mean whatever you're trading for at that time to make a, a, a like you said, a gain before the, the actual transaction was completed. So that's not a good transaction because you want to be ahead of the group or ahead of the, the band. We have to think. We have to be aware. Not only how the business go down, but what are we bringing to the people in the communities? We have to be aware, not just of how we do things, but is it morally correct? Transactions should be peace of bill of law. Karma should be thinking, I want for my brother what I want for myself. Yes, I have to make a profit. I have to make it reasonable. So should I buy these items that's out of their, their reach? I don't think so. But let me give you something that they, they got out there. African American consumers, brothers that have businesses. So does everybody know? I went and looked it up just because I wanted people to know. So I want you to know. 
that the African American consumer is a three billion, three billion dollar opportunity for companies and individuals. And this is going from between 2029, maybe to 2021. It says black households totaled approximately 835 billion combined spending and was an increase annually over the past two decades by 5%. 835 billion, and we're not gonna talk about what it was on particularly, let's talk about what they're talking about today. They say that African American consumers are poor, some of the middle class, but they pay, or, or basically, they're a 12% of the smartphone business. They don't have a computer in their house, but they have a smartphone. They also are highly influencers on what they purchase, meaning that once, I guess, it gets going or it started, the revenue, they, it's a whole target on a particular market. So that market changes, and people focus on the market that they are pushing or seeking. But they acknowledge of it because they don't have these computers to look at the Internet at home, but they look at it on their smartphone. And the smartphone is just charging up this stuff, charging up this stuff. All right? But... They talk about the households, they talk about the poor household, the middle class black household, and they talk about expenditures on food, they talk about expenditures on health, and they talk about expenditures on food, health, and nutrition. Nutrition. We're getting the low end of the little supermarkets or whatever people that bring you to the grocery store, so you're not getting the nutrition in those places, but you pay a higher price because it's closer to you. Unbelievable. Why? Because you don't plan. Why? Because you allow that which you put there as acceptable. You don't have to accept that if you know that your money is that important. You can buy collectively, or you can take your time and plan. I know that I'm going to have my money at this time. I know I can't get to this place at this time. I'm going to have so-and-so. But well, we're going to go in there and we're going to spend this much. And I guarantee you, you'll have a better outcome. Because you have to think, why would I give my dollars to someone who don't care? Who's the one going to treat me with disrespect? Meaning, they don't want to be upright business people. That's what I mean by the disrespect. I'm not talking about them being nasty. I mean, everybody's happy because you're bringing them some money. But disrespectful is, you know you're using me. You know you're abusing, not me, but my dollar. Forget the color of the person. My dollar, because I live in this community. That goes for the big supermarket chains. That goes for the Targets and the Walmart. If I could put it someplace, and I can make you pay a little bit more than you would pay over here, it's the same thing. I do not care about you consumer because I know who the consumer was. And I'm going to market stuff for you to keep coming back. The same way. I'm going to put it on your cell phone. I'm going to put it in an advertisement when you listen to your music. I'm going to put it in an advertisement when you watch your videos. I'm going to put it on your Facebook advertisement, your Snapchat advertisement, whatever advertisement they're using. They're using you because they got it, they programming you. And you see it all the time. That advertising don't call them from nothing compared to what you have to get out your pocket. And what you're giving them. Everything. And getting nothing in return. At one time, this community used to be called the World Community Island Slam, Nation of Slam. We took nothing and made it something. That's right. You took apples and you sold apples. And them apples became what? a store where you could buy a whole bunch of fruit and vegetables. Why? Because you knew there was nothing there and you had to put something there. You had to change the attitude 
of how you see and how you live. And that's how you came to get schools. The same thing, the thinking that this education system is not good enough. I need more. So what happened? Where are we today that we have to still be in the same position that we was 30 years ago? Where are the steps that we are taking to change those conditions? You know, we're talking about business in that Islam. That's what happened if you want to look at the business in Islam. Those conditions or the people change because of the needs of those people. The people that was in Mecca or the people that was in Medina that traveled from Mecca to travel to Medina, they needed a lot of stuff. They needed help. They needed housing. They needed clothing. They needed food. And through the believers and through certain acts of war, they became rich. But at the same time, they still had to support those that stayed there when they had to go on to these journeys. So you had to open up these places. This comes. And you had to deal with people, what? The way Prophet Muhammad dealt with everybody. Truthfully, honestly. And you had to what? Believe that Allah is going to take you through. See, some of this stuff is all about your belief also. You don't look at it that way. But if you don't believe what Allah says, how are you going to move forward? If you don't give when Allah asks you to give, how are you going to move forward? Yes, that's the business in Islam. When I told you, he said he forgave the person of a debt. Oh, that was shit. No, no. That was business. And the business was the man was communicating with his Lord. Because he didn't need all that that was coming to him. He said, Allah, you're right. Let's write this off. And let me move forward. And a lot of people highly increased that brother's business. If not any of that business, he brought more people to him. Because the people heard about how, not just generous, but how honest and how comfortable to work with this person. It could have been a lot. It doesn't matter. What matter was, their heart was in the right position. And that's what has to change. You want to do business in Islam, you have to have the proper heart. You have to have the proper ethics. You have to have the what they call a belief that everything that you do is for steps for what? Good. It ain't actually about the business, because some of the things that we put in our business is haram. But we feel that we're doing good. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is the mode. Understand what I said? We're talking about the mode, the operation. The projection of what you want to do and how you're going to get it done. And what you want to do, you want to be in accord with Prophet Muhammad and the way he lived and the way he did business. That's the mode. And when we get there, we get a lot of places. We move forward. And yes, progress comes over time. Progress comes right away, then what you going to do? I need help. Oh Allah, show me the way. It said it in the book. Read again. You have indeed in the apostle of Allah a beautiful pattern. He already told you that. How do we follow Prophet Muhammad? If we can't follow in the Quran, where we find that? In the Hadith. If the Hadith is sound, it relates to what's in the Quran. That's it. You don't have to go no farther or outside those steps. When you say you want for your brother what you want for yourself, it's the same thing. How can I get a business going if I don't follow the steps that my brother did before me? The pattern, the guide. So Muhammad had one guide. Some of you have these businesses. Y'all have a guide. I have to follow that as long as it's in accord with what Muhammad did and with the Quran says, the treatment of each other. Assalamu alaikum. I don't know if I left out any service for you that I did um, hold or not, but I know I didn't bring everything I was going to give you. And it wasn't because I'm lacking it or forgot it. The Quran always talks about riba. 
And like I said, I talked to you earlier, Reba has two forms. You have the good side of it, and then you have the part that everybody always look at, the usury part. And everybody talk about usury, they talk about banks, they talk about how we can't use this. But to this day and time, we have to use every resource. But you don't go into any banking, any business foolishly. You do your homework. It's called preparation. The same thing you do when you cook food. You prep it. You make sure you have every ingredient first. You make sure you have the right measurements. So why would I go into business without the same type of preparation? That's foolish. Your food tastes good because you put the right everything in it, right amount, this and that. So your business will be good if you do the preparation. What's the preparation sometimes? Duh. How much it costs to run a business? Is this area feasible to pay this rent? How much profit for this product or this product? Will it continue to keep it growing? You know, most businesses fail within the first two years. Why? Not because the people don't like the product, not because of the people didn't do the homework. Geographics changes all the time. Not just one place, all places. The same effort that I put in to sweeping a floor should be the same effort I put in to owning a business. The same effort I put in to sit down and join a meal or a bowl of soup. Every sip, and I'm like, oh, I want some more. Oh, where the crackers? Okay. So that should be the same thing that we do when we go into business. We should come preparation, prepare. And we should make sure that, like you said, it's ethical. Or not ethical, that we balance it out. That we don't abuse one side over the other. And that when we do contracts, especially when it's about something that's big, we have a witness to that dealing. So when we sign it, there's a witness to say, yes, I saw so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so together when they came to do this agreement. Period. Follow that which was given before you, and you will never go wrong. I greet you with the universal greeting of peace be upon you. I saw a lakum. May Allah accept our prayer and our worship. May Allah bless those of you who came out, because we know some of you may be sick. Some of you may be suffering. Some of you have ailments. We ask Allah to bless all of you. We ask Allah to bless those that are still sick and suffering, that are watching us on this social media, or those who listen to us, to us wherever they can. Because the blessing is saying the prayers and asking Allah to increase their faith. The blessing is asking Allah to bring them to a higher state and help them, and bring them to a better health, better condition, and being humble when you can. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah accept our worship. Um, email Rahman, you want to leave, please? Yes, sir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Shadu wa la ilaha illallah. Shadu wa na Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayyallah for Allah. Allah. Thank our brother Wali Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Let me know when we're ready in the back, inshallah. Inshallah, we want to make the salat like this is the last salat we make on this earth. With our eyes wide open. <coughs> We intend to make the obligatory prayer salat al Jum'ah to Raqqa'ah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Rahman Rahim. Maliki Yomidin. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إدنا سراط المستقيم 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Rabbana atina fadunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa 